Hi there, I'm Sarah Mee, and today we're sewing the split tool belt. This is one of my patterns. I wanted an apron so that I could squat down, I could sit down, and everything stayed in my pockets. I made it elasticized along the top here. There are currently six pockets on the apron, but you can configure it however you like. I'm using splash fabric today, which is a laminated cotton. This means that the edges naturally won't fray since the fabric's been laminated. But I give you some tips and tricks along the way if you wanna sew this in something else. And I also give you an idea if you don't want to bind the perimeter, you don't want that look or you don't wanna sew that. And then there's a couple of other options for the belt as well. All right, you ready to sew? Let's get to it. All right, you can use a variety of fabrics to make the split tool belt, but today we're gonna to be using splash fabric, which is a laminated cotton. It's kind of a light to medium weight fabric, so I'm going to make my apron base in two layers. There's two separate aprons that you're going to be wearing on one belt, and um, each one's gonna take two pieces. So I have a fabric on the back and a fabric on the front. I'm gonna be using this more solid color on the front so you can see the distinction of the pockets against the background. Uh, so I have two that are gonna be considered the lining, which is this print, and two, the, the solid that's gonna be the top. I also have two pieces that are for the casing for the belt. I have um, one flap cut out, so I needed two pieces for one flap. And I have two pocket pieces here as well, and these are unlined. As for the notions, I'm gonna be using pre-made webbing, but you can use fabric as well and make your own webbing belt instead. Uh, if you wanted to try making this a tie, you could. You could make um, and, and skip the belt buckle. You could make a belt long enough in fabric or maybe even using ribbon or twill tape or something like that. As long as it's flexible enough to, so you can tie it and long enough that you can tie it, you can do that as well if you wanna skip the buckle. Uh, I also have a little bit of binding and it's gonna match my base here. There's only two pattern pieces in this pattern. It's the apron base here and then the pocket here. There's some proposed pocket divisions and I've only notched the center at the bottom of each of my pockets. And I also notched the center of the bottom of the apron base here and I just folded it in half and gave myself a little nip down there. Uh, there's The pocket flap is right here inside the apron base and I just folded the paper and cut around it like this to get my pocket there. All right, let's get sewing. All right, the last notion that we're gonna need is two pieces of elastic and anything that's between that 3 8 inch to a half inch width. It's going to depend how long you need your elastic. Some fabrics are gonna gather up very easily and others, they may be a little stiffer and they may, may need a little bit, um, a shorter piece of elastic to help it scrunch in. So the elastic just needs to stretch across the apron here, the apron base, and we're gonna be gathering up this pocket here. So this is gonna be something that I would probably check like when you insert the elastic, don't cut it yet, maybe cut it at the full length of 14 inches, and then see what you actually need to trim it down to. All right, so we're gonna start with our pockets. Now because we're using splash fabric today, the fabric doesn't fray, it doesn't need overlocking or any of that. So we're just gonna fold over our fabric here and sew a casing. So we're gonna fold this over here a little wider than our elastic. So I'm doing this probably about five eighths of an inch. I'm just edge stitching along the cut edge there. And we'll repeat with the other side. We're gonna do both aprons at the same time. All right, now we're gonna thread the elastic through the casing. And I just use a loop turner here, so I hook it on the end there. You can also use a safety pin, that works really good. And when I get this elastic to the end here, I'm going to stitch it through the end, just to secure it. And I don't wanna twist the elastic, so now I'm gonna pull with this other end, get a little bit out, and then see how it's doing here on my apron. We don't really want to scrunch the apron up, so we want this to be as relaxed as possible. So we could probably use the full length of the elastic. So I'm gonna secure it. And I'm gonna evenly distribute these gathers like this. Now let's repeat for the other side. All 
Now that we have our two pockets with the elastic in it, we're gonna put a gathering stitch along the bottom edge here. We're just gonna go somewhere along this, you know, curved corner here. We'll start there. Our seam allowances are a quarter inch today, so try and keep your gathering stitch inside that seam allowance. This is gonna give our pockets some volume. And now we're gonna gather up this bottom edge here. We're kind of going for the same width as the top of our pocket here. All right, now I'm gonna kind of straighten it out. So I like to line up the gathers so that the bottom edge is a little less unruly. It's like that. So we have our little pocket there. Let's get some gathers in the center. All right, repeat for the pocket. All right, so we're gonna grab one apron base. If you're lining it like I am, you wanna put these wrong sides together just like this, get all these edges lined up nice. And remember I found the center along the bottom here and marked it and same with heat on my pocket. So we can line up our center right on top of that notch. I'll use some clips today, but if you stay inside the seam allowance, you can pin through the splash fabrics. It'll be just fine. And we're just going for something that will line up to our sides here. So let me let out, let out a little bit of my gathers here. Now you can customize your pockets any way you want. Maybe you want all a, a lot more gathers at the bottom of one side, maybe even a lot of your fabric at the top here scrunched more to one side because you want something larger in this pocket. You know you're gonna put something in there. You can do that. You can change the division sizes um, like when we divide up our pockets. You can put more fullness in one area than another or less, whatever works for what you need it for. All right, so we're just trying to make sure we're not gonna be stretching it. All right, last thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna make sure that we're pretty symmetrical here. So I'm gonna fold this in half and make sure that my pockets are right across from each other. Like that, so it doesn't look tilted. All right, and we're gonna top, just, we're just gonna stitch the pocket in the seam allowance here just to kind of secure it. Keep this edge lined up. Get your gathers nice and straight like this. There we go. That's looking really cute. All right, now you need to decide what your pocket divisions are. All right, so I'm gonna put my pocket in thirds using the pattern and I have had put a little um, cut in the fabric where the pocket division is. And I'm gonna go straight up best I can. So make sure that you get this nice and distributed up here. I sort of hold the elastic taut so then that way I know that I'm gonna evenly distribute it just like this. And we're gonna go straight up, just like that. And we'll do the same on this side. All right, so we're gonna repeat for the other side. I'm gonna add a flap to that one as well. All right, so let's add our other pocket. And for this one, I'm gonna add a flap. So if you want a closure on your flap, so say you want it to hook to something on the pocket here, like with Velcro or a snap or magnets or whatever you want, you need to add that to this pocket right now. I'm just gonna leave it as a flap that doesn't have a closure because that's usually all I need. The flap is enough. I'm not out there doing cartwheels in the garden. <laughs> so it's gonna be enough to at least hold things in there for me. And um, then I don't have to fuss with any closures as you know, Velcro can get hung up and on things in the laundry and stuff like that. All right, so let's line up our pocket here and we'll get all the way to the same spot as this one and then we'll attach the flap. When you do those elastic ends, you really need to pull it over there so that it's this edge is nice and flush. All right, so let's get this nice and distributed here. All right, so let's sew our flap. We're gonna put this right sides together. Quarter inch seam. And if you need to trim your corners, you can trim those. I like to do like a little cut out there. It's pretty soft fabric, so it should be 
no problem to turn it, but something like canvas, you may need to trim that edge down a little bit more. All right, we're gonna really press this with our finger, get that edge nice and turned out. I centered a little pomegranate here. Look how cute that is. <laughs> and now I'm gonna finger press this. You can iron this, just read the directions. The splash fabric, you can iron it. Just read the directions. Sometimes I just roll up between my fingers and that'll give me a nice edge. All right, so I'm gonna edge stitch this. There we go. All right, and now let's see. We'll put this right here in the middle. And what I like to do is put my flap almost against the pocket. I'm going for something pretty symmetrical there. And we're going to just back it off from the edge here. So I'm sliding up this raw edge to the top of the pocket. And now I'm just gonna back it off like a tiny bit, like not even an eighth of an inch. Let's get rid of this thread here. And now we're gonna sew this down with a quarter inch seam. All right, and now we're going to make sure you clip these threads. We're gonna trim down this cut edge here. And what I like to do is put it face down on the table here so that the only thing that we're going to be cutting is this edge here. So I make it the bottom layer. So the flap is against the table here. And this way we can see this apron base here and we won't catch it. So we can really be careful. All right, so, and you know on the other side, there's nothing else possible to cut. So now we're going to fold this down and I press it again. And I don't press so far that I'm picking up the fabric like that. I sort of press it really hard and then I back off. I let it kind of just relax a little bit over and now I'm gonna sew and enclose the seam we just trimmed down. And I'm sort of pushing the elastic pocket out of the way. That way it doesn't accidentally bump my presser foot and bully it so that then it, I would sew crooked. So that's what I'm doing there, just pushing that out of the way. All right, and now we have a flap over our pocket. It's kind of big. Probably could have put my dividers a little differently, but this will keep things in there. All right, so now we're ready to kind of finish up our apron. We're gonna bind and put on our casing. All right, so we're gonna bind just this curved perimeter edge here. We're gonna leave the top edge raw. I'm gonna put a label on here right now. I'm gonna put it, maybe I'll put it right under this elastic edge here. So we're gonna bind this curved perimeter edge and I always start with my do binding from the wrong side. So on this side here, we're gonna put our binding right side to the back of our apron base here. And we're gonna sew it on at a quarter inch seam allowance. You can see this is sort of buckling there, so just hold it firm. And make sure none of these pockets kind of blump over into the seam. So I'm sort of pulling on them and smoothing out the seam right here so there's no other layer under there but this edge here. So we're just gonna go all the way around. So keep your raw edge of your binding lined up to the edge. Keep all these threads towards the seam allowance so they don't creep into our finished apron. And again, I'm just gonna give this pocket a little tug, make sure nothing's kind of blumping down into the seam there. We don't wanna catch any of our gathers. Just a little tug. Tug so much, see how I get this little uh, bump right here, so I flatten that out. I'm always managing that under layer. Put all these threads towards the raw edge. Same thing over here. Make sure we're not getting anything but what we want in that edge. And when we get to the top here, backstitch, and we'll just trim off our binding like that. And now we're gonna trim this edge down. We have this little angle there. Um, it's always good to check the curves. Make sure you have a nice, even seam allowance. We're going for something about a quarter of an inch wide. I always find that my corners are the most uneven. So I sort of trim those down. They're the ones that the binding sort of fights to wrap. So I always make sure that those are trimmed. All right, we'll get rid of these, get rid of this thread here. And now let's also make sure we didn't catch any of our pocket down there. Looks good. All right, so now we're gonna pull the binding 
to the right side and give it a good tug, like tug it nice and firm. It'll lay nicer, just like that. You can see it's already trying to curl over onto the top. So now we're gonna wrap this around and you can use pins and clips if you want. I'm not going to, so you can give it a try and, uh, if you would like. So we're gonna fold this in half twice. We're gonna fold it so that these raw edges are lining up and then fold it again. And we just want that fold to go just past the seam we just sewed. So let me bring the camera in a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna, I brought the camera down here a little bit so you can see I've pulled my binding to the top side here. Give it a nice good tug. If you want to iron it, you can. Uh, it doesn't, it's not really necessary if you're managing that edge pretty good. And so now when we fold this, we want to fold it twice. We want to fold it basically so that the raw edges meet each other right there. And then again, along that where they met there. And this fold edge here, the last one's going to cover the seam we just sewed. So make sure that that folded edge goes just past it. And now when we edge stitch it, we don't really care what's on the back side. I mean, you can if you want, but it doesn't matter if your needle lands on the binding on the back side because it's already secure. Nobody's ever gonna see it. So, but if you wanna make sure that your needle lands on the binding on both sides, just keep your needle to the right of the seam we just sewed. All right, that's the trick. So just put your fold past that seam and your needle to the right of it and you will land on there. But you know, nobody's gonna see the back side. I'm not too concerned with it. I really like using an awl when I sew binding. When I, I, before I get to this curve here, I'm very firm with my hands. I kind of pull and tug on it and I sort of place it on that seam. I have to sort of back it up a little bit, just like that. And now I use my other finger, sort of smooth it and I'm kind of pushing it away. Most of sewing is just handling fabric and it, it's just some of it's trickier than others. Approach this curve here and again, I'm very firm. I pull it, I fold it in half that first time and then pull it and then I place that fold on the curve and I really am kind of pulling it back to sort of back it away from the apron so it's not all on the top side. We want it divided, you know, half of it on the underside and half of it visible on this side. All right, and we're getting here at the, getting to the end here. And there we go. That looks pretty good, let's see. You can see I fell off my binding right here in the corner. Um, that's about it right there. Sometimes it's in the ditch, like right here and sometimes it's on the binding, but nobody's gonna see that. And we're not entering it in the fair. So there we go. So now this just needs a casing. So let's repeat this for our other one. Now, if you don't like binding, or maybe it's not the look that you want, one thing you could do is at the beginning, you could keep these two pieces separate. And now at this stage, take your back piece here, put it right sides together and sew around the perimeter and turn it right side out and then you don't have to bind. You will lose about a quarter of an inch around the perimeter, but if you um, want, you could always add that little bit of a seam allowance or whatever seam allowance you like to the edge there and you wouldn't lose any of the surface area. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. One little tip I like to give when I'm doing binding um, and it's not binding as a facing in like a neckline or an armhole. When it's binding that's gonna sit on the edge here, I gently pull it when I'm on this step here. So I'm very gently pulling it. It's kind of keeping it taut. You can kind of see how it picks up like this. It's not sitting flat. That's partly because of the curve, but even over here, it's picking up a little bit right here. That's that a bit of tension that I'm keeping on the binding as I sew. And what that does is it helps hug the thing I'm sewing when I do the next step, when I pull it to the right side.
All right, there we go. That's looking really, really cute. Okay, so let's trim our binding flush up here. And now we're gonna add our casing for our belt, whether you do a tie or webbing or you make a fabric belt. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hem the short ends of each of these rectangles. So since I'm using splash fabric, I don't actually need to turn my hem twice or finish that edge because it's the edges are all sealed. They're not gonna fray. So you could just trim, or you could just turn this a half inch and stitch it down, or you can do a rolled hem. I'm still gonna do a rolled hem. I, I do like the way that looks. All right, so I'm gonna show you two ways to attach this casing. Now one, I'm gonna do a clean finish. So I'm gonna do it kind of like the binding. I'm gonna start from the wrong side and sew this right sides together. And then I'm gonna pull it to the other side, turn it under and top stitch it. So I'll do that one first. So we're gonna sew this at quarter inch seam through all layers like that. And give it a good tug just like we did with the binding. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to turn this under a quarter inch. Let's trim these threads though, so they, we don't immortalize them. Make sure there's nothing else. And if you want, you can press this and press the seam up towards the casing. And we'll turn this under, quarter inch. And same thing, we're just gonna go just past that fold, just like that. We could probably clip it up here, just to keep it folded if we want. All right, so we're gonna do this. And the danger with this, especially since um, I'm not going to poke holes in my laminate here, but if you're not using a laminate, you could pin this. The danger is getting any torquing. So make sure you're always tugging this up and folding it under. So when I get over here, I'm going to get this one turned under early. Let's get those threads in there. And we're gonna clip it, and then this way I know that this is sort of my non-negotiable spot. I have to be there by the time I get there. So we're gonna make sure that we're not getting any torquing or shifting. And again, I'm still pulling on that under layer. And I have another way to show you how to sew this in just a second. It's a little bit easier. But if you don't have a serger or a zigzag um, and you really want that clean finish, this will be the way to go. And it's not a very long distance. There we go. We have our clean finished casing. So this apron's done here. This is what the back looks like. Let's get rid of any threads. All right, so now another method to do this is to fold this in half, get all your threads again to this raw edge. And we're gonna sew this right sides together on our apron all in one go. So because I'm using the splash fabric, the fabric doesn't so this is completely sufficient. You could also sew the seam and then zigzag the edge to prevent any fraying on other fabrics or overlock it, whatever is easier for you. And one, um, one little helper you could give yourself is if you folded this in half and gave yourself a notch halfway and a notch halfway on the top of your apron here, you would really ensure that you didn't get any of that torquing that we're worried about. So I'm gonna hold all my layers together here and manage them as I go. And I sort of have to pull it down because of that curved seam there. I'll even get my all out, sort of ease that in there, make sure. A little tuck is not gonna bug me too much either since this will be on the back side. So let's trim some of these threads here. This is still a two step process, but this time we don't have to do it with such fussiness. So now we're gonna pull this up very firmly, press it if you want pressing the seam allowance up as well, and we're gonna top stitch this to kind of secure that seam allowance against the back of the casing. And I'm really pulling apart here. Remember, my seam allowance is pressed towards the casing, and we're just stitching through all layers. So that's an option too, and that's what this looks like on the back, just like that. Let's get rid of some of these threads, and now let's put our buckle and our webbing together. All right, so let's thread our webbing through. This is stiff enough that I don't really need a helper, but if you need one, you could use a safety pin or 
a loop turner or something to kind of grab it. Okay. We have our two aprons here. So now let's put our buckle on. All right, so for this end of the buckle that the buckle goes into, we're going to affix the webbing to this. And this one, we're gonna stitch on there permanently. We're not, it's not adjustable. So if you're using a cotton webbing, you definitely wanna turn under the edge and stitch it down. If you're using a synthetic webbing, you can melt the end to secure it, but I highly recommend turning it under and stitching it down because um, webbing can tend to be really fragile. And then on this one here, we're going to thread it through and it's gonna be adjustable like this. But we're also going to hem this now that it's through there. And sometimes um, if you're really worried about a webbing kind of slipping out of a hole, what you can do is fold this so that you have sort of a lip. So what I'll do is I'll hem this edge right here, right? And then I would fold it again and stitch across right here. And then this way, this can't slip through the buckle, you know? So let me hem this edge first. And if that's enough, you can stop there. But then I will do another little fold here like this. And it's kind of like a catch. And then that way your buckle, your webbing can't slip through the buckle ever. Let's check out our apron. Very cute. All right. Thanks for sewing the split tool belt with me today. I had a really good time. I really love how this one turned out and I can't wait to get started using it. And I hope to see your split tool belt. So please tag me if you ever make one. I'd love to see it. Thanks.